My name is Sly Fox Town, and welcome to Katawa Shoyo. So, if you guys know, this is part of my dating sim series. Uh, so this will go from episode three, I believe. Uh, whew, a lot of homies wanted me to do this uh, dating game. A lot of people were like, "Man, this one is it has to do. You have to do it. This is a good one." And I'm like, "All right, all right. You know, what? I want to be emotionally attached to someone. I want to, I want to find my my other half because." Right now, I'm single as a Pringle, and uh, I don't like that. So, even if it has to be love through anime and stuff like that, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna find myself a waifu. A waifu. So, let's start. Uh, apparently, I don't know. I didn't read much up into this, and I don't know who I am. Apparently, I am this guy here. So, that works. <sighs> I look great. Let's start this. This is a very heavy breeding kind of game. We make decisions and choices, and whatever we do, it affects the outcome. So, a light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like a wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer, even though it's winter as fuck. <laughs> the de deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent from numbing this in this cold. Hassal, I'm assuming that's who I am. Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyways? I'm sure the note said at 4 p.m. And yes, the note slipped between the pages of my map book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I am four, I'm, a, I'm more fan of the letter in the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. So I ponder, the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. It's getting heavy in this bitch, and I don't have a jacket. The snowflakes silently falling from the white paint sky are the only signs of the passing in this stagman world. Their world descends upon frozen forests makes it seem like it has slowed to a crawl. The, the rustling of a dry snow on their foot startles me. To roast my quiet mood, someone is approaching me from behind. Oh, surprise butt sex. Hasa, you, you came. A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. Huh, I probably know this person. I feel my heart skip, skip a beat. Okay, well, apparently I'm very eager to make, meet this person. It's the voice I listen to hundreds of, hundreds of times, but never is more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn to face this voice. The voice of my dreams. My heart begins to race. Oh, it's a female. And I got a little note, what the hell? It will not go. I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it, I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line. That was the only... So what happens when you're under pressure, you, you kind of like, you say the first thing that comes into mind, you're like, God damn it, that's not what I wanted. Pathetic. And I'll go, uh, yes, I asked the friends to give you that no. I'm so glad you got it. <laughs> she likes me, yay! A shy, joyful smile that makes me, makes me so tense. I couldn't move a single muscle if, even if I tried. <gasps> Jesus Christ, I must really like this girl. Holy shit. <laughs> what the fuck? My heart is pounding now as if it was trying to burst out of my chest and claim this girl for itself. Yo, hey, 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 ha, ha, stop. So, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches and the cockleful's noise is music to my ears. Inuaka flinches ever so softly against the gust. Ah! Uber kawaii. As it passes, she right herself as it was supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine. 
and she lazily twirls her long dark hair around her finger. All the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight, and I doubt I could even force a word out if I- Damn, I'm- I'm in love. This girl is like, legitimately making my body malfunction. I love you so much that I haven't been able to go to the party in seven days. I've been taking a shit. I love you. Like, that's pretty much what I'm getting at, this person. You see, I wanted to know, what the fuck, my heart? If you go out with me, <gasps> I stand there motionlessly, safe for my heart, for my pounding heart. I want to say something and reply, motherfucker, say something. But my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. Jesus. Hassau. I reached out to try to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. And now Wakos, Iwanako says, Hazao! Which is me, apparently. Oh, My whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which I shoot open in terror. Alright, body, listen. The girl that you fucking love, that you are all about banana cuckoo crazy, and you're doing this to me, body? Right now? Like, we could have farted and we would have been fine. This is bullshit. Huzzah! The beating of my chest suddenly stops and I go weak at the knees. Ha! Jesus Christ, I'm falling over failure with this girl. The world around me, the canopy, the bare branches, the dull winter sky, and the walker running towards me, all these fade to black. Oh, I fucking... I passed out. Are you serious? The last thing I remember before slipping away to the sounds of the walker screaming, for hell and the incessant clatter of the branches above. What? Then it was Oh. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what it was apparently was a pre-intro of Katawa Show You. My name is Sly Fox Sound, and I'll be taking you into this dating journey of decision making at its finest. I will be dressing up as, as so, because I've been liking to dress up. It feels nice. It makes me feel, well, since I ever started going to the office, I'm like, you know what? If I go to the office, let me dress up while I'm at it, you know, to make myself feel nice and chill. And to be honest, I like it. It's good. It makes, plus I, I only have to wear one shirt that I can like rotate between my other shirts that I got. So. Fuck it, you know? Less dirty clothes for me to take care of. And this is really nicely done. Like, this is anime for the intro. Oh, I skipped it. All right, so it's been four months since my heart attack. How did... The girl that I love, that I love to the point that I freaked out, gave me a heart attack. Holy shit, I am weak as fuck. My game is garbage. Okay, this is where I am. And that whole time, I can probably count the times I left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts, so I have plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arhythmia? Arhythmia? Armithia! Arr! I got a pirate disease. A strange word, a foreign, alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. Let's see what this is. A rare condition, it causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast, it can be fatal. Apparently, I had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of life, you know? It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents. I think we're hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhage apiece. Oh God! I had wait. I had already. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, it was a f all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. 
Damn, those are really committed parents. Of course, of course there isn't a cure. Great. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt like it, if I was missed. For about a week, my room, it was the war full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled, and all the get well gifts began trickling down. It's nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I had gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had been turned into a class project. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. You know what? Iwa, Iwanako was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had much to talk about when she visited anyways. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they're in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in, this, in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So I idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest slowly changed its appearance over time, thinking of it some kind of an omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around and answers shows that there's at least, at least some hope. At some point I stopped watching TV. I don't know why, I just did. Maybe it was wrong the kind maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a very, there was a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books, I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and I think I even became addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. But I loved the stores. That was what my life was like. The days became increasingly hard to distinguish from each other. Definitely only the book I was reading and the weather outside. It felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass. I was trapped inside and instead of moving within, a week could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes I paused in conversation that I didn't know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness. To the barrier of nonchalance I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp, and burning a hot and heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as it was if I was going to cry. But that happened only rarely, and I couldn't even cry. Today the doctor comes and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he's trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I last seen them. Both of them are even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. There's a ritual to the head cardiologist's hats. He takes his time sorting his paper, then selling them aside if he was to make a point of this pointlessness of what he's just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Hassel. How are you today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is strong now, stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We have all your medications sorted out. I'll give you a farther the, the pres I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad. His expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look for myself, feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? Oh Jesus. Look at all this crap. 
The absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. I can't even say that word. Insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects, contradictions, and dosage are listed line after line with the cold prescription. I try to read them, but it's too futile. I can't understand any of it, attempting to only make me feel sicker. All this for the rest of my life every day? Damn, this is like really putting a lot of like... This is giving you a lot of background of who I am in this game, so holy shit. I am fucked. I'm afraid that that is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Years. What kind of confidence booster is that? I have felt better if I hadn't said anything at all. Or if he hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken to your parents and we believe that it would be best if you don't return to your old school. Why? What? Please, calm down, Hisao. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Listen, calm down. The way he tells me, he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. And I'm going to be homeschooled? Whatever my concern shows is ignore. We understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So I've spoken to your parents about your transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy. They specialize in dealing with disabled students. Oh, so I'm disabled now? Oh, it makes sense. I have heart problems. Disabled? What? Am I? It has been 24-hour nursing. It has a 24-hour nursing staff, and only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. The child is. Is that fact? If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Of course, that's only if you want to go. But your mother and I are really able to homeschool. We aren't able to homeschool you. All right, Dad. We went out there and had a look a couple weeks back, and I think you like it. It looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, People with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need, you'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamn opportunity. Seriously, don't. Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. And I remember you wanted to return to school a oh, while. Wow, it's not the same one. Special cool. That's that's special school. That's that's an insult. That is what I want to say is to step down. It's not what you think. All the students are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. Your father's right. And many of the graduates of the school have gone to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues is another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. That's what a disability is. I really hate that something so important was decided for me, but what can I do about it? A normal life is out of a question now. It's funny, I always had thought my life was actually kind of boring and now I miss it. I want to protest, I want to blame the lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell something now, something about how I can go back to school anyway, but no. I don't say anything. The fact is that I now know it's futile. I look around the room feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There's really isn't a choice. There, there, there really isn't a choice, but I know this. But the thought of going to a disabled school, why are those even like? As much as I try to put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That's all I can think to get me through this. 
At least I still have something, even if it is a special school. It's something, it's a fresh start. It is, and my life isn't over. It's, it would be a mistake to resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. Hmm. Finally, we can get out of this hospital. Yeah, that's me. With my heart. Act one, life expectancy. <laughs> Look at these fancy ass gates. What the shit? The gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. Red bricks, black root iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wonder if it looked like what a gate. Wait, I wonder if it looked like what a gate for school should look like, but couldn't really decide. Probably no. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward, it feels good. So I walked towards the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there was supposed to be someone waiting for me. So the grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like kind of grounds like school would have. More like a park with clean walkway going past trees and the smell of fresh cut grass and all that park like things. Words like clean and hygienic popped into my mind and made me shudder. I shake them off, stay open minded. It's your new life, you have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies, too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley, even though I was told that this new this is my new school. In the back of my head, it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kind of eerie. It makes me wish there was somebody here I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. It makes me think about hospitals again. How they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a calming color. So why am I feeling so anxious? Despite all this greenery. Hmm. Only after I sit in front of the hofty main building, I surprised myself by realizing why the gates bother me. It was the last chance I had to turn back, even if I have no life I could return to. But still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous, and with this railway station sitting in my head, I opened the front door. Oh, look at this place. This place looks fucking amazing. A tall man with bad postures noticed me as I entered. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. Holy shit! Tall man. You must be Nina Niki Nakei. So you are, excellent. I am your homeroom and science teacher. My name is Mutuo. Welcome! We exchange handshakes. It's neither north firm nor sloppy. Give me that good old 2020. He looks at his watch. The head nurse asks for you for a brief check in visit, but there's no time for that now. Uh, should I go later? Yes, afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in this in a situation like this. Somehow, not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? All right, so I'm gonna really fall into character and I'm realizing that I'm very shy, that I don't like to be the center of attention. So I'm gonna ask why? Why do I need to go to the class? Why do I need to introduce myself? Why? Why do I have to? Of course not, that's why I asked. Right. Let's go then. My heart is pounding my chest and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. The third door, the third door, oh, <laughs> the third door down, the third floor corridor is marked as a classroom for class 3 3. 
Moto opens the door and enters. What the fuck? Look at that art. <laughs> Gross. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I'm late again. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Ah, get a grip. This is a big step. I know that. But there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. At least not this, this soon. Holy hell, look at all the kawaii looking people. <laughs> I follow the teacher into the classroom and I look around partially so I won't have to meet the curious gaze of my new classmates. It's pretty spacious, the ceiling is unusually high and there's lots of space left over around the in between and, and in between the desks. An entire wall is taken up by blackboards and a high old fashioned window only makes it seem larger. The students desks are a standard wooden desk with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Simple and efficient. I stop walking from the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal like students in any other school, but then why would they be there? Or why would they be here? They're probably like me and have something wrong with them. Only it's just not immediately obvious that I noticed that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb of her right hand. It's a little bit jarring. jarring. Despite the unnatural tendencies. Jesus Christ, look at that kid fucking sleeping hardcore. Listen to when someone's talking to you. I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone's looking at me. A girl with really long straight hair that's pretty eye catching. Hmm. And she's even looking back at her. She covers her face with her hands. If it will make her invisible. You can't escape me in my look. <laughs> there's only one boy. There's one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing. Oh, fuck. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers over me and rinses at her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. She's kind of cute. So is this cheery looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. Hey, look at her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her the moment I walked in. Please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands and does everyone else except the one girl in the first row who has only one hand. <laughs> what did I expect? Her going like, welcome. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. They don't do that. They, I don't know what they're doing. I cringe a little but hide it by bowing and thanks for his applause. I did not disturb. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't clap, you only have one hand. Thank you. <laughs> okay. After the applause, there's a brief silence that nobody seems wants to be responsible for breaking. The teacher soon realizes that we that he should probably say something. He opens up with some intelligible noises, shuts up and hits, and he as he loses his momentum and then starts introducing me. Nobody seems to be interested. Maybe I should say yes to the self-introduction thing. Probably realizing he doesn't know anything about me, he just ends up saying my name wrong again and asks me to write it on the blackboard. I do that, I turn back, face the class, feeling awkward. I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everybody seems to be listening to him intent intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels like a weird thing to do. The first row girl claps on this round with her one hand against her other wrist. Oh, and ends, ends in a bandage stump. It makes me feel a little bad. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> We're going to be doing some group work today. So that'll give you a chance to talk to everyone. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine with me. That's good, you can work with Hakamichi. She's the class representative. She could explain anything you might want to know and who else might be able to do that better, right? How, how could I know? I don't know. The teacher passes out, passes out the day assignment and announces that we will be working in groups of three. It hits me that I don't know what I don't know who Hakamishi is. Slow, the teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. Help me out, brah. All right, Hakamichi is right there. She assumed it, Hakamichi. Oh, it's the girl with the pink hair. 
as he calls out her name, the cute bubbly looking girl with bright pink hair and gold eye waves her hand at me. It, I take my seat next to her by the window. Hey, I guess you are Hakamishi, right? Nice to meet you. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for watching. If you guys really enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like. It shows your support. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this, then subscribe so you never miss a video. Woo!